The following was recorded in front of a live studio audience at the Studio 21 Podcast Cafe. This is the United Podcast Network. Welcome to the raw and uncensored Ambitious Podcast. I'm your host, the original HBIC, Katie Boyd. During our time here together, I will be instilling all of the strength, power, and determination you will need to use the very stones thrown at you to build your ultimate empire. We will redefine the word bitch from the derogatory to the acronym being in total control of herself. So let's adjust our crowns and prepare to live life ambitiously. Oh yeah, here I am, the original HBIC Katie motherfucking Boyd. <laughs> and over here is my big blota. <laughs> Not the blota. The big blota. Yes, that's a Portuguese word for what does it mean? amazing. Amazing. Actually means big, man. huge, hangy, heavy balls in Portuguese. I, yes, well well I I know I have balls, but you know, I'm balls. Sometimes they're bigger than others and sometimes they uh, hang low than others. I really don't want to see them while you're sitting on the couch in your bathrobe hanging uh, over the side of the couch. That's my relaxation state. If you come state over my of house, being. Don't sit on the corner end seat because that's where Matt's balls <laughs> reside. Matthew Babine, my right. co-host. Yes, yes, thank you very much. <laughs> um, that uh, introduction, I love it. Thank yeah, you. It's, an, it's an exciting, it's an exciting day when you thanks. get to podcast with the person you yes. love more than anything in the thanks, whole man. entire world. Yes, that's true. That's <laughs> true. If you're watching this from home, you can see my face is <laughs> not so fresh. Actually, <laughs> so before we start, yes, I actually want to award people who step up every week listen to the podcast, they get something out of it, and they go onto iTunes and they leave a five-star and written review because at the end of the day, if you do that, you get a $100 gift certificate to use towards anything KBMFC related. And this is from Dara JB. And she says, must listen. Katie's messages always seem to be at the right time for whatever is happening in my life. I love her passion for helping everyone live their fullest, most positive life. Dara, please email me at themisfitclub at gmail.com to get your $100 gift certificate to use towards anything KBMFC related. That's awesome. And because we have people that love the podcast so much, yes. and they've come on to sponsor this podcast, so we can make this happen every week. Our sponsor is Ayana over at Prana Hair, Skin, and Lash. If you reach out to her, you get a $100 gift certificate for microblading, which has totally changed my life. I hardly even wear any more makeup, even though someone the other day called me a Taiwanese lady man. What was the name for that? I remember Beng that. Kong. Yeah. <laughs> so I just got out of the shower. She goes, babe, I just got called a <laughs> Beng Kong. I go, what the hell is that? So It's like a t- lady boy. Oh, I didn't know Th- I don't know if it's Taiwanese or it's Thailand, no, no. but they're just jealous That's of my, my perfect brows. <laughs> it's because of my perfect brows and my gorgeous oh. lashes that, you know. I look like a Taiwanese lady man. Yeah. What the, <laughs> I don't know. You know what? That's not the worst thing who, I've ever been called in my life. I'm just letting though, everyone. Who has the time to be like, yeah, I got to send that to her and tell her she's a Taiwanese Keyboard lady man. Keyboard heroes. <laughs> Keyboard heroes. <laughs> so oh. get on over to Prana <laughs> Hair, Skin, and Lash dot com. Tell her this bitch sent you and you will get your $100 gift certificate off your first microblading. Mm. Yeah. That's great. It's awesome. exciting, right? Yeah. So we have some amazing upcoming events too. Uh, First of all, I have been toiling away for the last 24 months of my motherfucking life to write (laughs) Ambitious the book. Pretty much my book is a baby elephant because usually gestationally elephants are in their mama's womb for 24 months. Really? I did not know that. Well, because I'm a useless well of knowledge, obviously. That's unbelievable. I did not know that. Yeah. So I'm actually birthing. My book is a baby elephant. (laughs) You can just call my book Barbar. Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> well, I read I read some of Barbar, and I'll tell you something. It is incredible. You read only some of it. About, well, it's what you give me. Only only the only. Usually, I that read you give me. my manuscript when Matt's like three sheets to the wind, like hammered. <laughs> It's the only way I can get him to listen to me speak. Get the heck out of here. Yeah, so I, I get them all juiced up yeah. on on some um, Tito's. And then I'm like, hey, do you want me to read chapter eight to you? And he's like, yeah, sure. Bring it out. <laughs> I'm bringing it I would never. Yeah. I always listen to it first thing okay. in the morning. So Ambitious is going to be up for pre-sale in late November. So keep your eyes and ears peeled for that. I know. It's so exciting. It's going to be awesome. Yeah. So if you sign up for pre-sale, you get the first five chapters. And then we're going to be launching the 
big old book the first week of January. So if you come to Kripalu, which is the first weekend in January, you'll actually be able to get your hands on the book before it goes out into stores. That's awesome. Is that sexual? Yes, very sexual. And I think I might have some swag too. Matt has been like (laughs) on me about swag. I fucking hate swag. Yeah. You you want, why do I hate swag? People ask you for it all the time, though. It's like, oh, I want a bitch's hat. I want a bitch's okay. uh, sweatshirt or I'll work on that or... this week. That's on my to-do list. Good. We better get on it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah, it's uh, January. Can, we'll be here before you know. Can you get Matt a man bitch shirt? We are doing that. Yeah. We're making yeah, a man shirt. We're yeah. making a man shirt. I feel like there's got to be a man ambitious book as well. <laughs> like how men can join the ambitious movement. Because I feel like a lot of men have been talking shit to me lately being like, it's not just about the women. Like the men want to be bitches too. And I'm like, yep. fabulous. I'll, I'll hook you guys up. Absolutely. Right? Yeah, absolutely. But you also have to be a feminist. Are you a feminist, Matt? Of course. You fucking better be. That wouldn't work out very well. No one knows, but I'm actually holding <laughs> if I said, a gun no, to Matt's I'm not a, I'm liver. Not, I'm not a feminist <laughs> at all. Yes, you are. I am, I'm saying if what I is said a feminist? that. What is a feminist? Uh, someone who respects women more than anybody no, no, in the no, world. No, 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 no. So go ahead. Tell me it's, what your version of a feminist is. anyone who believes in the equality of men and women being equal. Oh, I didn't even know that. I didn't. That's all it is. I didn't, I'd have to really dig deep for that because I just dictionary. I just look at every woman and man is equal. That's why. Yes, you do. I, yes, I do. But so, like, I don't know. I didn't know that that was the actual. 98% of the rest of the world doesn't really believe that. No. So well, that I'm is around, my. I'm around a lot of women in business oh, and work. Yeah. And, you know, we just came yeah. home from Portugal and Matt was just like, wow, yeah. that was a lot of estrogen. Yeah, but I learned a lot from them and I love them and yeah, I never had a problem with women. Damn ever. right. We're your biggest teachers, motherfucker. Absolutely. Yeah. Giddy up. <laughs> <laughs> so today's podcast is going to be awesome. Mm-hmm. Uh, I talk a little bit about this in Ambitious. So this is kind of like a preview to what's going to be in Ambitious. And we're going to be talking about how being ambitious is about being courageous, right? Big time. Yeah. So I, I love this quote. It's by Marianne Radmaker. And she says, Courage doesn't always roar. Sometimes courage is the little voice at the end of the day that says, I will try again tomorrow. That's so cool. Isn't that so good? That is really good. Because doesn't everyone think that courage is just like, I have to get out there and I have to like hustle and I have to be like fearless and all this stuff. But at the end of the day, courage is the not the absence of fear. Mm-hmm. Courage is maybe shitting your pants and being so afraid, but saying, fuck it, I'm doing it anyway. Doing because it anyway. you always say this to me, and this helps me a lot. You always say, Katie, whatever you're afraid of, you have to ask yourself, like, what if you don't do this thing? Mm. Then what will like, happen? Yeah, yeah. And I always weigh that out and I'll say, well, I'm really afraid of this, but I know that if I don't do this, the repercussions down the road will be so much more dire. It's easier for me to tell you to do it, though. Yeah, I know. <laughs> than me sometimes, right? Because, yes. I mean, we kind of re- uh, work back and forth off, well, off each other. In our yeah. house, it's all about following the leader. So you have a really strong day, yes. and I'll follow your lead, and then I'll have a really strong day, and Matt will uh, make Matt follow my lead. <laughs> because not everyone is like, you know, roses and sunshine every right. day. I right. mean, I wake up some days, and I have a hair across my ass. Yes, and that's a true partnership. That like, I woke up this morning, and I was just like, what is this all about? <laughs> I'm why, like, why am I even here? And get Matt's out like, of it. Shake it off, sister. Shake it off, sister. He's like, you go. need to go meditate. You need to go get your shit get together. Your shit and I was together. like, you're right, you're right. And then I meditated and I was like, oh, it was fine now. It was fine. I'm ready yeah. to go podcast. Yeah, absolutely. But there's days where you, like the other day, Matt was on the phone bitch and I was like talking to him about something super important and he's like I'm doing something <laughs> like he just looked at me and goes I'm doing something and I was like oh yeah, but you're one, not getting laid anytime number soon number one sir. is you were, you were way across <laughs> you were way across the room and I had an angry email and I was trying to think and you know I work in healthcare and I had to make sure you know there's people on the other end of healthcare that are Understood. sick and angry and doctors that get nervous about patients sometimes right. and, and I was like okay I have to be able to make sure that this works out this way and it wasn't our fault it not was an actually, excuse whatever but I was not paying attention to what you were saying I was kind of oh, like hearing half of it so I was like I'm doing something. I'll be right there. <laughs> no, you didn't say that. You go, I'm doing something. Well, probably. My, three yeah. year, my three-year-old uh, came out. You sounded something straight out of The Dark Crystal. <laughs> Do you remember that movie, The Dark Crystal? The Those Dark things Crystal. were like, yeah. Oh, I remember that movie. You made me watch it. Yes. 80s. You made me watch it. Yes. Because I was Whatever. like, what the hell is this? Turn around. Oh, God. Don't get that song I'm going to get that stuck in your head today. Please don't. <laughs> but uh, no, well, you I, have to follow yeah. the leader, right? Yes. Follow the leader. So I want to give you guys... Five ways to 
step into courage on a daily basis. Okay? Mm-hmm. You cool? I'm cool. I love so courage. So the first one is have an open heart mm-hmm. because the root of courage is core, C-O-U-R, and that yes. is French and it means of the heart. Mm-hmm. So when you're stepping into courage, you're not coming from a place of the mind. You're coming from a place of the heart, which I think is you know and so important. The, the brain and the mind will uh, sabotage courage because now are you really going to have to – if you're a hero or you're trying to do something heroic, if you overthink it, are you going to do it? No. Probably not. It's no. going to come from gut reaction or heart – it's actually a heart reaction, but people yeah. call it a gut reaction. Yeah. It's going to be something that comes from the heart. I have to do this because – and then you know, don't think about it anymore. Just do it. Right. But sometimes it's reaction. Right, like yes. war heroes or different things that yeah. do these courageous things, or people. God, you know, remember nine eleven, or firefighters on a daily basis, or right. police officers. They don't think if they don't. That's why they do the training, right? Yeah. Yes, to be able to train themselves to have. So true about courage. firefighters, right? Like if every you, day, if you, yeah. if it's nine eleven, right? Because this is something that I actually spoke about this in my book as well. Mm-hmm. It's like if you see a burning building and you're like, oh my god, this is crazy. Like yes. a plane just went into this building. Rats are running out and they're <laughs> right. running in. Right, to you save. have to have that. It has yeah. to come from your heart because if your mind said to you, "Yeah, it ain't gonna be good," yeah, people wouldn't do it. No, right? No. It's, it's bravery, courage, and I know they're fearful, and I know they're thinking about, like, "I have a family, and this is dangerous." But they, in spite of it, they do it. Yeah, and that's what's amazing about courage. And on the, on our level, I'm, you know, I'm not a firefighter, and you know, all those different things. But you have to take courage in business. You have to take courage in life. You have to be courageous to be a parent. Yes. Um. You know, you're not always going to be popular. You have to make decisions, right? That takes courage. Yes. Because your kid may not like you, <laughs> but you're not there to be their friend. Our child to... doesn't like us very much right no. now. <laughs> <laughs> I think she was avoiding me for a while. We're I like, think Karina, it's... your student loans are kicking in. <laughs> uh, you want to go consolidate those? Yeah. So I actually. Because well, we made her take she just out keeps sending us to voicemail like every day. <laughs> <laughs> so we made her take out loans, right? We we're like, you're gonna have some skin in the game. Yes. No, we, we helped her a lot, yeah. but we also were like, bitch, need you to need take skin out loans. In the game. I, and she knows. I said, you're gonna have skin in the game because if not, I don't want you just partying at Boston University and enjoying. You know, she really didn't. And party. She didn't. She was a really good student, but God. she also knew that you know she had a great work ethic. You know, right? Because of uh, us, from us and. Uh, we're proud of her, but she is going to have to pay some of that bill. Right. <laughs> That's courageous. I'm courageous about that because I will have a courageous few bucks in my pocket at the end of the month. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. So lead with your heart. Mm-hmm. And sometimes like, you know, that's hard to do because we don't have anything to like anchor us. Yeah. So like maybe, and you do this, you do this really well, where you have like your heart stone, like your rotocrosite, right? Yes. And every time you get kind of like off tangent. Too much in the head. Yeah. yeah. You hold the rock and you remember why you're doing what you're doing on a daily basis. Yes. Maybe if you feel like you have an absence of the courage muscle, maybe have a mantra that says, mm-hmm. I know I'm courageous, I am courageous, I am courageous, or whatever. Or think with your heart, think with your heart, think with your heart, or lead with your heart. Something that can anchor you. Yes. And it's training. So I do that. You know, I, I use that rock. I yes. use it as an anchor. So when I, I put it on my dresser before, when I go to bed at night, I see it the first thing in the morning and it goes in my pocket when I go out to do whatever. My I'm husband's do. telling everybody out there in a bitch's land that he carries a crystal in his I pocket. I do carry a crystal. And it's, a, it's my anchor to be able to, well, because it's training, right? It's training my mind. It's training my body. Where What am I doing? Who do I want to be? What is my mission? Because all these things will come in and start to distract you big time, right? So I'm training like a firefighter for daily life, right? Because if you don't train the mind, somebody else is going to train you. You're going to be trained by every circumstance, every email, every person coming in, sucking your time dry, right? right? And you have no mission, you have no purpose. So in the morning, I have to know what my purpose is. What am I doing? Who am I serving? What am I going to... So you have to train. That firefighter would not run in that building because he's done it. He knows what to do when he gets in there. He knows how to use his oxygen. He knows what doors to open what was not to open mm-hmm. from training and we need to be able to train ourselves before yes. we leave right so use an anchor so either anchor. a mantra or maybe hold a rock or a stone or something maybe it's a bracelet maybe it's a necklace something to anchor you down to remind you to live in that courage space because courage is it's not everything easy. If, it was, if, not it was, easy. if it was easy everyone would be doing it right Amen. you always say you always say that Babe, if it was easy, everyone would be doing it. It's yep. not easy. I woke up the other day. I was like, wa- I was like doing cardio, and I was just like, I'm the only person in this fucking gym right now. But I'm like, hey, this is the two percent. 
Yeah. This is the people that yeah. actually make shit happen, right? Because I was courageous enough to get my fucking <laughs> stretchy pants on and get to the gym. <laughs> and, but once you get there, you're yeah, fine. you're fine. It's 90% it's getting, getting there. your butt there, yeah. right? Uh-uh. Number two, commit to the outcome no matter what. And I say commit to the outcome before you even venture into the thing that you're about to do. Yeah. So before you even start something. So for me, like I'll use the book as an example. Two years ago, if you guys have followed my journey, you know that I literally lost my whole entire manuscript. Mm-hmm. I remember. <sighs> my whole entire manuscript. Now, a year and a half later, I'm probably like a week away from finalizing the entire book, everything, the cover, mm-hmm. the font. Like there's just so much stuff that goes into it, right? Yeah. But before I started, I said to myself, if you don't finish this book and you die, you will lay on your deathbed and say, oh my God, I wish I coulda, shoulda, woulda. Yeah. And I cannot stand regrets. I think regrets are literally the most wasted emotion on the planet. Yeah. And I just knew, if you don't finish this book, you're going to kick yourself in the freaking ass until the day you die. Mm-hmm. Oh, and, yeah, and I absolutely. just So I said to myself, I don't give a shit how hard it gets. I don't care what skills or acumen you have to like take on and learn. You are going to do this. Like the first couple months of working with my editor, Shirley Jump, who's been literally an angel in my life. Mm-hmm. She's helped me so much. And she's not only just my editor, but she just gives me amazing advice because she also you know, publishes books and all that, right? Some she, great books she's published too. And she's amazing. Awesome. And yeah. like every week I'm just like, I don't know what the fuck I'm doing. And she's like, dude, no one knows what the fuck that they're doing. You just like learn. And so when I first started doing the editing process with her, like every week I would be like touching buttons on my computer, hoping like all the shit that I just wrote like wouldn't ex- just explode. I don't know why I have this. Like before, I, geez, I don't know. You lost a whole book. I know, and, but I and, also uh, have like this weird fear from like my high school and like my college days where I would like write a whole entire thesis paper and then like my whole computer would just like crash. Have you ever had that happen to you? No. Yeah. Or did you just... You- I, well, when I graduated high school, we didn't have laptops. It was just right? a feather and a, a quill. Yeah, and a, we had a... <laughs> and a scroll. <laughs> Those scrolls were... Uh, oh. Matt had an old typewriter. 1985, we still had... We How had, earnest Hemingway I graduated Hemingway of you. in 1985, so all I had is a, a typewriter. <laughs> oh and then I was God. in college, I, you know, I paid people to... Right, not you write, did not, not write You're my papers, but type them because yeah. I still use a yellow legal pad, <laughs> right? And I used a yellow legal pad back then, and I would just be like, <laughs> oh. I, I, and I, you know, I suck at typing. So no, maybe. you suck at typing because you say you suck at typing and you don't try to right, learn. Well, I, don't I suck at typing too, type. <laughs> but you know what? Lit, like Matt will watch me type now, and I'm so fast you because fast. I've like learned and I forced myself, and like you just. You just do it. Yes. So you commit. And I said that about my book. I said, I don't give a fuck. What I have to learn, come hell or high water, this book will be done. I don't care. Well, maybe I need to commit to the outcome of learning how to type. Yes. Matt, there's great online tutorials (laughs) that are almost like games you can play. (gasps) Maybe I love that up because you know something? That's one of my weaknesses and I probably need to bridge that. You know what he does to me, Mr. Ed Sullivan? When he goes to like type an email, say for instance, right? He'll he'll say, I'll text will, you ty- it. "Will you type this email for me?" I w- if it's long, if it's a long email, like with a lot of stuff on it, I'm like, "Do you, you remember know. like during oh Mad Men God. time when the when the guy would like <laughs> slap the lady on the ass and he'd be like, here, sister, honey, like, type yeah, this, sweetheart, honey. type this for me,' or like dictate, like yeah. I'll dictate and you type." I'm like, "Am I I'm not a fucking I'm stenographer over here? Like it, <laughs> the OJ Simpson trial? Like what he, is happening?" He's like a big boat anchor. It's isn't seriously, <laughs> I'm her anchor. You are right? my anchor. Yeah, oh see, my that's god! A good thing. Please stop I'm being the anchor. albatross around my neck. Learn how to type. <laughs> I'm the albatross. I'm the best. Yeah. Okay. We type this for me later. Especially when I have like 300 things going on. And Matt goes, Ew, "Can you look over this for punctuation and gr- grammar?" I go, uh, "I'm not." an editor Shirley yeah. Jump does that for me yeah, I don't need Shirley Jump yet I just need Katie to jump a little bit I think you should start me. having Shirley do all your I shit just, for I you I just need Katie to jump a little bit for me every now and then no. that's my, uh, editing but <laughs> sorry we're off on a tangent that's what happens here on the Ambitious Podcast but commit to the outcome no matter what before you even begin the task or the journey at hand yeah. right yeah. and don't give up right keep it going like yes. think about Atreyu from Never Ending Story yes let's okay? go back to let's go back to yeah. Never Ending Story did you like when the prince came and was like, you're our only hope. Was he just like, oh shit, I just lost my horse in the swamp of sadness. Fuck, mm-hmm. that sucked. Mm-hmm. Okay, a friggin' huge thousand-year-old turtle just blew snots all over me and blew me to the friggin' tree. That's really sucky. Yep. Um, I almost got my balls burnt off by the damn Sphinx women with oh. the tits out. 
Do you remember this? I don't know anything about this. You watched it. I did it. watch it, but I don't remember anyone's tits getting burned. Yeah, and freaking like Falcor is like, everything is gone. Did everything that is gone. Yes. Oh, I didn't know this. Okay. Remember? Yeah, I remember everything. And was the racing gone. sail, the wind blew it away. I mean, it was so sad. The rock eater, like all that. He, but Atreyu oh, said, probably, I don't give a shit. That's probably three what Cheetos happens. in at this point. I think this was going on. <laughs> Be like Atreyu. <laughs> when you set out on the hero's journey, know that you are the savior yes. of your own I reality. I committed to that outcome that night when that movie was playing, apparently, because yeah. I was like, I'm going to watch this no matter what. Matt was, I, I, Matt love, was like, I, lo- I love my wife. <laughs> so I'm committed to watching it. <laughs> yep. Come on. You can learn it was a lot a really of shit good. from was, Punky Brewster and Never Ending It's story. actually a very spiritual movie. Yep. Okay. Moving on. <laughs> You're a Debbie Downer. <laughs> Number three, break out of your comfort zone. Weren't we just saying this to Matt, the one finger typer? All right. I said I would get the tutor, what do you call it, the tutorial, and I would start going. So when you hear this. Oh, my God. Thank you very much, Mr. (laughs) Ramaston. You really need to get your shit together, but you need to break out of your comfort zones. Yes. So for me, my comfort zone was in my mind, I would say to myself, I'm not a good writer. Right, I'm very, I'm stupid because that's what teachers told me. Mm. Teachers in my high school literally said to me like, "You're really dumb and you'll never amount to anything." To my face in front of a whole classroom full of you people. You know, that's, there's our education system. <laughs> there we go. Exactly, yeah, that's great. But what? But you know, were there times that I believed it? Absolutely. Yeah. When I was first, you know, sending my ambitious book stuff to Shirley, yeah. I was like, "God, please protect me." please don't let this woman think I'm a total fucking idiot, right? Like, I would say that to myself oh. every time, every chapter I'd send her. And, you know, that, that what a shame, though, that somebody would say that as a I teacher. Know. Uh, to be able to, you know, that's here you are, uh, you know, years and years later, and you're still thinking about that with that one And jerk, jerk are there said. not people that have literally gone to school to be writers and they have never produced a book? Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Right? Absolutely. It's the opposite world. It's so, people that, you know, just they have the balls to be able to put it together mm-hmm. and actually go for it, yes. right? Regardless. And they're not Absolutely. afraid, you know, they're not afraid to commit to the outcome, right. whether it's going to be good or bad. Mm-hmm. And that's why you're an unbelievable businesswoman because you put it out there and you do it. And I know, think I'm just a sick fuck. Shame on um, And I have longevity. That teacher. So when everyone else is giving up, I think that's what makes me successful in a lot of ways. I'm not afraid of being uncomfortable. Yep. I'm not what is it what is that thing that they say you're only as sick as your secrets? Mm-hmm. So if I'm just like, you know what? I'm not a fucking writer. I didn't go to school to be a writer, but I'm going to create this thing because I know that God places in my heart and if I don't do it, I'm literally not only slapping God and the universe in the face, but I'm spitting on all of the women that came before me that paved the way for mm-hmm. me to be the person I am today. Absolutely. Right? Yes. Absolutely. So you have to say, okay, this is uncomfortable. It sucks. It feels like you're freaking walking on broken glass in the great words of Annie Lennox. And a lightning bolt's not going to come down and hit you and say, this is a sign. Do I wish. Book. You have to <laughs> push yourself forward yes. and make sure it happens. What is your yeah. um, most uncomfortable parts of your life? Like, what is like something fearful for you and, and like you're very comfortable in and you know that you really need to break out of it because that's what's going to propel you to the next level? What I work for, what I work towards, what I'm working on now, yes. big time, because I'm in, in I'm, I'm going to the next part of my spiritual yes. uh, 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 quest, yes. uh, so to speak, uh, is really you, thinking with my heart much more. Like even people I don't like, you know, or people that rub me the wrong way, and or whatever the case may be, yes. I have to. I'm looking at myself and saying, why does that rub me the wrong way? Ooh. What is something inside Give me? An me? Example. What, what is something inside me that I don't feel good because they're triggering it? Give me an example. Ah, uh, example, example. Let me think. Anything okay. happened recently? No, you know, no, not recently. But just I've been I've been doing a lot of meditation, and a lot of these things come up in my past, Ooh. right? So people that are well, you've been having a lot well, of that stuff going on. So that's lately. that's that's why. So and I know that that's the next. As a man, I think that's one of the hardest things to do. Were we just talking about this the other day, though? I, I think you we had were. a really good example. What was it? I don't remember. It was like about. It's, there's so many examples that I, I, I've been working on that I, one doesn't come to me right now. But if it does later in the podcast, I'll bring it up. All right. But, no one cares. But anyway. <laughs> 
<laughs> no, but really opening up and being that person, right? And 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 thinking with your heart instead of your mind. Yeah, and we talked about that a lot, you mm-hmm. know, before. But that's 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 huge. By the way, my husband's triggered on a daily basis, and he's a bullshit artist, and he just doesn't want to bring any examples up because he doesn't want to. If you someone. have an example, I'll talk about it. But I don't. I really don't. I've had so. Yesterday seems like ten years to me. That's the journey I'm I on know. right now. So, Time is so things, are, things are so rapidly happening, right? You understand what I'm talking. No, about. I totally no. do. I think some people do too. Number four. All right. Give up control. Control is a fucking illusion, people. <laughs> it's not real. It's not real. You know, I am a huge control freak. I'm working on it on a daily basis. For me, my control came from a childhood that was tumultuous. There was a lot of fighting at my house. There was a lot of like topsy-turvy things Mm. going on. And I thought like, if I can can just control myself, if I can control the way I look, if I can control, I know this sounds like so stupid, but my bedroom when I was a child was always like so clean and everything was like always like lined up in my closet and everything was like perfect. And that for me was how I felt safe. By controlling my little things, yes. right? But what happens is this spills over into your adult life and then you start trying to control like, you know, they talk about In Untethered Soul by Michael Singer. Mm-hmm. Like you have this like thorn in your leg and instead of just taking the motherfucker out, right. you're like, we're going to wrap it in bubble wrap and then we're going to put a beautiful oh, bow on it and then yes. like no one can touch it and like no one gets near it. And it's just like, no. So giving up control I think is really being courageous because you're literally saying to the world, like, I don't know what the fuck is going to happen next, but I'm open to whatever happens because I know I'm a good person and I know that I'm divinely guided. And it's cause and effect. So if you're putting good causes out there, you have to have right. the uh, wherewithal to say, you know something? I don't know what's going to happen, but I know every day I'm doing the best I can and yes. I'm serving and I'm giving 150%. And then I know that that's also a law that it's going to come back. Yes. Right? And just let it go. Yeah. Right? And let it go because that's really giving up control. Absolutely. Yeah. Like when Matt <clears throat> shaves his face in my bathroom <laughs> and he gets fucking hairy water everywhere, all over my I have like the cleanest sink. shaver ever. Mind so. you, everything in my house is white too, so you can literally see every little speck of everything. And then I want to just fucking donkey punch him in the back of the head and like brain him and mm. then curb him like American History X <laughs> style. Like I'm not even joking you like Eddie Furlong there's shit. Some, there's some violence coming out today. Yeah, it yeah. triggers me. Because my control is what? Everything Cleaning. has to be clean and yes. everything has to be perfect. Well, now I that know. I know that, I'm going to have to help you. I'll, I'll do immersion. Just like Matt. I'll just do immersion therapy and I'll just start throwing my whiskers Okay, first, all first of all, motherfucker, everywhere. I had immersion therapy last yeah. week when you shaved your nutsack yeah. over my toilet and left pubes everywhere but you know something how clean was that how clean was? oh that? i just love sitting on the toilet to take a how piss and my feet I? are covered with my, pubes on the bottom it's I just like the best pedicure i ever very, fucking got in my life very clean shaven very clean shaven so yes people my husband man- i am manscaped i am manscaped so that's 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 what we Kelly call Clarkson! It. <laughs> <laughs> give up control i'm saying that to myself right now i'm having pubic hair flashbacks right as we speak Oh, God. Mr. Ed Sullivan, please don't ever do that. <laughs> I, I'm kind of disgusted. Aren't but... you disgusted? <laughs> yeah. It's like not a he, joke. He thought the other the other podcast was a problem, but we're the problem you now. You see me just like shaving my bush like over the toilet like, yeah, yeah well, get listen, ready for tonight. Listen, I, did, I did it in my privacy in my bathroom. You were not there. <laughs> I thought I vacked everything up, but apparently, no. This is the same toilet that I go to the bathroom in the middle of the night and slide on piss under it. Okay. No. Listen, Slippery. listen, I am very, very conscious of being a male, and mm. I always pick up the seat. So yeah. these are lies. Okay, lies. we're moving on. Lies. Last but not least, yes. never take no for an answer. No, yeah, all right. <laughs> I never take no for an answer. You're, you're, you're sitting here with me, so I never take. I didn't take no for an That's answer. That's actually very true. Matt is the poster child for not taking no for an answer no. because he actually pursued me for over a year. Yes, worth it. Every, every minute, I'd do it again. Would you really? Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Okay. You're worth every every. Wasn't uh, that I was on the cover of some magazine in lingerie? That was a part of it, and you know, I was uh, manifesting at the time, and I manifested you. I actually so found I, that <laughs> magazine in one of Matt's creep file cabinets in his file drawer the other yes. day. <laughs> Don't get that. He, he has like a he has like I a just file. kept it as a memento. No, he has a file of creepy Katie Boyd shit. It's yeah. like. You're, it's very mind hunters in my house right now. <laughs> mind it's very mind hunters in my Ooh. house right now. 
Yeah, he oh, has yeah? like a whole file of Katie Boyd like sexy pictures. That's, well, is that your spank bank? That's no, it, no, it's not a spank bank because you know because I have you on sex rations because your hair is all over my fucking bathroom. <laughs> sex rations. I've never, that's one ration I've never been on. Thank God. Oh my! Do not believe him out there in a bitch's land. <laughs> she can't keep her my hands punani off me. is powerful, and I oh. empowering it by not giving it up oh. to Matt when he shaves his nuts <laughs> over my toilet. <laughs> All right. We'll never say no, so that answers that. I will definitely <laughs> prevail. <laughs> oh, this is fun, Matt. Wasn't this I never fun? take no for an answer. It was actually a really good podcast. Come I on, really bitches. Like be courageous. This is how we make <laughs> shit happen. This is how we go to the next level. This is how we live life ambitiously. Thanks, Thanks for job, Matt. Oh, thank you. Thank you for having me. <laughs> and thank you to all out there in the ambitious world for help making ambitious a movement. And like I always say, see you next Tuesday. Yeah. The views and opinions expressed by the hosts, guests, or callers of this program do not necessarily reflect the opinions of the Studio 21 Podcast Cafe, the United Podcast Network, its partners or affiliates.